Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at Nikon full frame camera. Basically, be mindful if you're watching this review, I have combined all the review there is on YouTube, not 100% of them, but in the description below, you can see the list of how many YouTubers I have combined. So this is an overall picture of everything that we know so far everything from the good the bad the why everything i have done it so in the description below you can see youtubers name or from which i am referencing this data from so all of those things combined should give you a very good overall understanding of the nikon system so let's dive right into it now it is nikon's first full frame the reason why i'm uh, emphasizing on the full frame is that nikon does have a mirrorless system which now they will slowly phase out is one inch sensor system and uh, the whole reason Nikon even uh, has any sort of uh, what you say chance to you know compete in this mirrorless world is simply because they have a large lens collection as in upwards of 300 lens exist like you can easily buy 20 to 30 lenses as of now in any shop uh, so suffice to say their large lens market allows them to have uh, quick so if they create a system and lens is already there people can easily buy it so they created a new mount system now this mount system is uh, does allow some benefit but does have some consequences however don't get too excited about it and i would urge you to compare this mount to canon mount you will see why i'm saying that and in this review i'm combining all of the things and i'm gonna break this review down in three core parts the good and if you want to see positive things about it please uh, watch till that point and after that please close the video the bad what went wrong and the why like this part i haven't seen many people uh, you know paying attention to so let's come to the good part it's a nikon now you might be like okay what does that mean if you are a nikon shooter you know what that means nikon has been working at uh, digital cameras for long enough that at this point their name is like a tool like oh you are using nikon you don't use camera you use nikon like Canon is also at the same level, but uh, if you are a Nikon shooter, you know what does being a Nikon means. No camera has the same level of uh, proficiency and uh, endurance that Nikon and Canon have because they've been doing this for 100 years, literally 100 years. So suffice to say, Nikon means means a lot like it me truly means a lot and not to mention they have done quite uh, quite a great job at handling as you can see everybody who is uh, you know reviewing this hands on flat out the first thing they say oh damn this is very good you know like in hand it feels great as in like you can take this camera out shoot with it and don't get tired with it like you know your pinky finger will not be like uh, i have no place to go all things combined it's a Nikon with very good build quality, what you will expect from Nikon. And it has also have weather sealing. So that's an added bonus. And it has a capability to adapt their old lenses. As I specified, the Z mount is a new system and their old system, they have to uh, like, you know, adapt. Otherwise, if they didn't do that, they will be in the same position as uh, Sony is where they don't have enough lenses. So they do sell an adapter and adapter supposed to work flawlessly with the old system, including vibration reduction, autofocus and everything. So this adapter should take care of most of your old Nikon lenses. Be mindful, Nikon never open source their, um, not open source as in license their lens mount technology, neither Nikon nor uh, Canon. So what does that mean? Simply means if you see a third party like Sigma or Tamron, they never have the data of how the Nikon lenses are made. They reverse engineer it. They don't have the license for it. Only Sony, as I talked to you, has opened up their, uh, you know, specs so basically they give the front end data to uh, their customer like sigma can now make native sony lens not reverse engineer not figure it out how it works like raw data raw processing so it should be noted like uh, your third party lenses may not work as expected because of this reason because the lens mount was never open to the public or third party companies so just be mindful now this is the only full frame camera that has touch frame now, like wait a minute doesn't sony have touch screen no sony does not have touch screen all they have is like touch focus their menu cannot be used by uh, uh, basically touch screen i have no idea why because that literally means some programmer has to block that function why i have no idea and it has usb c charging finally finally and it has in-body image stabilization as you can see five axis of image well, 
up and down and all that and be mindful if you combine it with a older lens which has vibration reduction they lose three axes uh, they drop it down to three axes simply because it's uh, much better to let the lens control the x and y axis because lens has to move very little amount of detail and it will compensate for a very large movement so for that reason they're like okay lens will take care of one thing uh, sensor will take care of the raw uh, roll yaw and pitch because roll yaw and pitch cannot be controlled from the lens so inherently they are dividing this role so be mindful if you are like if you connect your vibration cover would you get better performance absolutely early reports are in that this actually outperforms panasonics while walking because sony did had this issue because their mount is kind of small their sensor cannot move that much and you see that when you are handheld and walking panasonic because they have uh, you know large room of sensor movement which they also get from this is because they can move the sensor a lot and uh, lens plus the sensor should give you better if not almost as good as a uh, vibration reduction while doing video so that's awesome now if you wanted to know like nikon please leave video here please like uh, because the bad things are really bad so the first thing you will hear about everybody losing their mind is like why the heck this has uh, only one cut slot now the reason many people say it's not that a big of deal it's a big of deal because if the cameras is expensive nobody cares this uh, in a 200 dollar camera or 500 dollar camera or uh, let's say 1500 dollar camera but if your competitor at 2000 dollar price is giving you dual card slots in almost everything and you yourself have released cameras with uh, xqd standards and with dual standard in that is in 2016 this is unjustifiable like flat out unjustifiable simply because your competitor is offering it why are you not and people like xqd card doesn't fail that much again it, it has to only fail one and you will be like yeah i'm not touching this camera again that's why people are like frustrated with this fact and many people say you don't need it again we also don't need polio cure but we have it like humanity lived for 99 percent of its lifetime without having cures and vaccines and medication but would you like to give them up it's like and somebody compared it to like movie industry where like you know oh they also don't have uh, like the red epic cameras don't have uh, what you say redundancy a they have many many of the cameras have live output as in high quality live output which is recorded and not to mention every uh, cinema is shot multiple times every scene has like you know three, three to four footage of it and they are recorded back up instantaneously on the servers they are not like you know uh, just running around with a, you know one sd card and things like that so for that reason having multiple card slot is a peace of mind does does that uh, make sure that you will never lose your system no things can still happen but it reduces their odds so this idea of not having uh, you know dual card slot simply is like why why when your competitor is giving you that option this hurts that's why and people are like we used to use that of course we used to live without polio cure but do you want to to live in a world with polio second unable to charge old batteries i did say it charges uh, via usb c but uh, i cannot find exact details on this but best of my knowledge is either it has a chip or charge controller itself in the battery not in the camera that's why they, it cannot charge the old batteries now if it has a chip that's just shitty behavior from nikon side why do you want to create a next battery system where you're like yeah our uh, why that makes no sense like you're literally behaving like apple it's like oh uh, my usb c port won't work with any other dongles why why like this this is stupidity on steroids like you you already sold the batteries just make the charge controller or the chip in the freaking camera second it has no flip out screen now again sony also did not did that but again sony did not that did that because they did not have competition nikon was competing with sony and they could have done it and they have cameras that can do that like d5 5000 series and there are many cameras and d800 cannot have it simply because there are a lot of button on the side edge so it cannot flip out but in this they could have done that and it has very weak cpu as in cpu is the core reason why uh, sony cameras used to suffer a lot with heating issue at the early days and panasonic have the only one who nailed it out almost no heating issues and uh, flawless performance from the uh, cpu and see what the cpu allow you to do is like allows you to do 4k at 60 frame per second allows you to do 
120 frames per second in HD without cropping. This camera does cropping. So that means if you do high speed shooting as in 120 frames per second, your sensor crops down. This happens because sensor, uh, the processor cannot take the data from large sensor and you know uh, weed out the data because the processor is very weak. And not to mention it cannot also do what's called 10 bit internal recording. It has 10 bit, awesome has no ability to record 10 bit internally I and mean, you're like why and many of you might say like you know uh, 4k 60 frame per second might be like you know very heavy Panasonic does that they do that with dual SD card slots so suffice to say it's doable is simply because their processor is not powerful enough the expired app x 6 engine that they are using is not very powerful inherently it's not very powerful now what i can guess bro, from everywhere is that nikon just created what's called good enough like it's not a bad camera by any stretch of the imagination it's just good enough it's not like groundbreaking it's not like pushing through like this camera like imagine panasonic 10 years ago like before these cameras panasonic was a joke but panasonic pushed so hard they worked so hard like even the idea that they will allow you to do 10 bit recording internally and you're like i don't use 10 bit you don't need to but you would like to have that option in your high-end product. And if everybody is allowing that, you should. Like your uh, customers waited a long time so they can have this sensor and you're like, nah. And people are like, okay, what if the data rate is very too high? They are using XQD. Panasonic can do that with uh, SD cards and XQD goes upwards of 400 megabytes per second to give you the idea how big that data, that's the uh, right speed of uh, red epic camera yeah it, it has the same technology as that and their xqd card that uh, next generation of cfast card that will come that will have upwards of gigabytes of read write speed so not able to do that internally simply means one thing they have very weak cpu very weak cpu so overall the reason why people are pissed it's a good enough camera it's like after waiting for four or five years where nikon was just not doing anything all they got gave you is like eh, just take it and go so we have to look at why this happened. This is what a uh, lot of reviewers has not uh, mentioned. Is first you have to understand their stocks are not doing very great. Now this is a stock market uh, graph from beginning to this point. And as you can see, they peaked at 2007. And from that point, they have continuously going down 2018. And they do say this out loud in many times that camera market is shrinking. Now you might be like, if camera market is shrinking, why Sony is uh, you know jumping in? A, Sony already makes the core technology, as in many Nikon cameras have Sony image sensor. Many mobile cameras image sensor is from Sony. So Sony already has the core technology and they are losing money in uh, other fronts as a corporation, Sony corporation, like specifically their uh, smartphone, it's now almost forgotten. And uh, not to mention their movie, uh, Sony's movie division is uh, yeah almost dead. You cannot keep releasing a flop movie after flop movie after flop movie and expect your stock price to go up. So Sony has to come into this industry because they are losing ground in everything else. So they have to come and they already make the core technology. So this was very easy move for them. For, for Nikon, what they did is they moved out. So one, once this stock started to dip, they started to sell other uh, equipments as in like industrial grade equipments, uh, industrial -grade optical equipments. And you can type uh, Nikon industry and you will see them. Uh, they have a lot of other products and they make more money from that rather than the lens and optical system they sell to consumer simply because they are a high margin products as in like you know how a company makes more money uh, selling a flagship than a smartphone uh, like low-end smartphones second this the reason why this uh, happened like you know the their camera does not look wow is it's called because of r d lag now if you don't know this this is not Nikon's first time where they have suffered because of R&D lag and they tried to uh, jump into what's called uh, action cam market. They failed miserably because by the time they detected that, you know, GoPro is actually becoming a big thing, actually, you know, selling millions of copies of um, million pieces of camera and all that, they started the R&D. But R&D is not something that happens overnight. It takes years, even for them. So by the time they came out, they're like, yeah, the market already started to go down. Those people who have bought uh, uh, you know gopros they are already happy with it and they're not gonna buy a new thing and not everybody was buying it it's like you know the people who wanted to buy it they already bought it so it was done so they knew flat out these things won't work so as of now i do not know the status of these things then they did this sort of thing again in 2016 where they started to release uh, their dl line 
this was one instance I was supposed to compete with uh, Sony RX100 series cameras. Yeah, they just cancelled it. They took pre-orders for that and then they cancelled it. And this is Nikon one inch uh, mirrorless system which they will abandon over time. So this kind of thing happens all the time in Nikon where they do not risk it all. Like the sole reason Panasonic or Fuji is even in the market. Like I remember uh, YouTube videos five, six years ago from uh, Film Riot videos is that when they were talking about Panasonic camera, it was like, ah, it's okay. It's like, you know, it's okay. And now they are the golden standard. They are the standard. Why? Because they put everything plus the kitchen sink into it. Their processor, I, I do not know who is designing their processor, but holy damn. Like seeing how badly Nikon is like, yeah, we can't even give you 4K 60 frame per second, let alone 4K 60 frame per second, 10 bit and uh, internal recording and all that, 4 to 2 internal recording. Yeah, I don't think they can do it. And you have to mindful. Canon will not save us anymore because Canon already makes video camera. That's the reason why Canon DSLR has not been like, you know, as jaw dropping as uh, they used to be. Like, could you have imagined three to four years ago that Nikon would be the one that releases the first DSLR that has full frame, uh, full sensor readout in 4K? Like, this happened. This simply happens from Canon side because Canon have their video lineup. And uh, you have to understand there is something known as very uh, very annoying thing it's called point of diminishing return now what does that mean is very simple you put two times the money you get twice the performance that's awesome that's equal return you put four times the money you only get two times the performance that's point of diminishing you put ten times the money and you only get three times the performance point of diminishing return this happens that's why uh, canon has to make sure they do not cannibalize their upper end camera because nobody's gonna buy them like only certain niche needs can be met by that thing and again I told you they are at a point of uh, diminishing return it's not miles ahead of their DSLR of course it has a lot of extra features a lot of necessarily unique things but it's not holy crap like you know you you can see footage from a good DSLR versus a good video camera the gap is not that much so they have to give everything in that or cut from DSLR so Canon cuts from DSLR and Nikon simply not having a video lineup I thought they will do it, but they're like, yeah, we don't want to screw up with uh, Canon. Uh, basically, the most successful DSLR at this point is the uh, 800 series, uh, Nikon D800 series. And it's doing quite good and it's quite well. And it was like, you know, uh, jaw dropping when it came out. So we thought they will do the same. And you have to realize whenever a company becomes this big, when they have like hundreds and hundreds and thousands of uh, data points, they simply don't care. They're like, what are you going to do? You can't make your own camera. And what you're gonna do throw away your lens like so they know they are like Apple at this point how Apple like sorted the freaking uh, you know SSD on the motherboard then removed the data recovery port so if something goes wrong you are dead so and you're like yeah backup yeah well, you're gonna backup every five minutes or every five seconds <laughs> it's like so you have to understand this Nikon is not doing very well they have screwed over like that one two three times and these are the times that I could find they might have screwed up more times and flat out they have no reason to they're like yeah we will release good enough now hopefully hopefully they might learn from the market and will they do it no it's the same reason why sony does not give you a touch screen it's like they built a touch screen now they have to do oh nikon has touch screen uh, uh, remove the software block just done so this is the reason why we are stuck in a, such a lame situation so uh, this was my review of all the drama that is going on in the youtube market so i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you didn't don't worry about it dislike it leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of camera tuesday and uh, subscribe press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching